epic Stattle One speedruns of statistics. Brian Stevens versus Chapter Six Scatter Plots Associations and Correlation. Begin. Let's start at the beginning. A very good place to start when you make scatter plots, you're doing two quantitative variables. So we can look at your time spent studying and your score on the test. Now, both of these are going to be quantitative, which means they're actual real numbers. We could do mathematics on them. We could subtract two people's scores and talk about a difference, or we could subtract two people's times and talk about which one spent more time studying. This will make a scatter plot right here. What we want to investigate is the interpretation, which starts off with the direction of a scatter plot. This first scatter plot right here has a positive direction. You can tell because it goes upwards. The direction is just the way the stream of points generally goes. The other direction we have is negative, and a negative scatter plot will go downwards. So a negative scatter plot goes this way. And then we can have a scatter plot that is not well described by either positive or negative. And we'd really say that it's neither. And a few examples of neither right here would be a scatter plot that shows no relationship. Here's one with really nothing going on. A flat line would go through it. And then we have a scatter plot in a parabola. And this is not really, really well described by a line. So both of these would have a flat line. And this is really your example of neither. These are neither positive nor negative. So these are not positive or negative. They're neither positive or negative. The next thing we want to talk about is the form of a scatter plot. When it comes to the form of a scatter plot, we have two major forms to look at. We have either the scatter plot will be linear or the scatter plot will be not linear. So let's look at the linear scatter plot. A linear scatter plot is going to be one that is generally well described by a straight line. Now you could see, this is just a second example down here, you could see a scatter plot that has a little bit of a bend, uh, maybe a little bit bend at the end, but generally speaking, a straight line goes through the majority of the data, and that's our goal with scatter plots is to figure out the direction and if it's mostly linear. This one right here is an excellent example of a linear relationship. And so these are linear. So we have here linear forms. Now the other form we have is nonlinear. When we want to see if a scatter plot is nonlinear, because either something is linear or nonlinear, we might see a few different things. And we go back to our previous examples. A nonlinear scatter plot could look like a parabola. And this will come into play later on because a parabola is a type of association, but it's just not linear. So if you look right here, the straight line does not well go through it. Even though you can fit the line, the line does not well describe the data. We can also have things like a time series plot where the data goes like this. And even though there is some linearity, it's really not well described by the straight line. So that one I would say is pretty nonlinear. There's some sort of wavy pattern going through the data. When we get to strength, it's important we understand how strength can be quantified in a scatter plot. Strength in a scatter plot would range between the values of negative one to one. So when we look all the way down here at negative one, what does it mean? Negative one is going to be something that is perfect negative. And what I mean by this is all these points are perfectly on the line. What is positive one? Positive one is perfect positive. So if we draw a line here, then all the points for positive one will be perfectly on the line. That's perfect positive correlation. It does not matter the slope of the line. So let's draw some additional reference graphics here because the slope of the line could be really steep and negative or really kind of not steep. And this would still have a correlation of negative one because of how close the points are to the line. And this would still have a correlation of positive one because of how close the points are to the line. So the strength is the vertical scatter, and we'll see more on that here in a second as we draw some correlations for negative 0.5 and 0.5. You notice these are weaker because they're closer to zero. And when we have these, we'll just draw one graphic for each. When we have these right here, we'll see that we draw a line that goes up, which is the direction, and a line that goes down for the direction of negative, and then we'd put points with scattered more out. So the vertical scatter around the line indicates the strength. And I'm gonna draw a similar type of correlation here with the same sort of scatter because this is meant to represent the same strength. And what do I mean by the strength? 
The strength is this vertical scatter we're seeing. So the vertical scatter here is the strength. Now, when it comes to zero, there's two key examples for zero. Zero would have to be a correlation that had the weakest linear strength. So let's think about this. If we were to have a line, the line would be flat because there's no linear correlation between these. And I keep saying linear because it's important. We would see here a blob of points that kind of looks like a zero. And if you notice, this is really wide around it and the strength is very weak at all times and it kind of looks like a zero. Where these look more like a one or a negative one because that one goes downwards. The next thing we can think about is one of the unique relationships where we do see a very weak or non-existent linear relationship. And this would be with our parabola. We're back to the parabola again. And the strength linearly is zero, but there is still a strong association that is not linear. So you see the parabola, if I draw the bands around it, is very strong around the parabolic association, but it does not have linear strength. So what does negative one to one measure? It measures the linear strength. Very, very key thing right here that these are all linear strength. Can't make that clear enough that this is all linear. If you have a nonlinear relationship like our uh, parabola right there, it's not gonna measure that at all or not very well. Next, we get to unusual features. Unusual features would be things like outliers. We'll draw a nice big plot right here. So you might say, well, I wouldn't wanna be an outlier. Well, let's look at that time spent studying for test again, and let's look at the score on the test. Now, people do not study for the test. You do have points down here, and people do spend a lot of time studying for the test. You have points up here, and we'd put all the different things, and we can see there's a positive, somewhat linear association between these, and then we have this person all the way over here. Now, they might have made one of the highest scores on the test, and you can see that by their score, but then they also did not spend much time studying on the test. There were people who didn't spend much time studying. There were people who made high scores on the test, but this combination here, this bivariate combination, that's the key with scatter plots. Something is an outlier in the bivariate sense if they're far away from the general form of the scatter plot. There's a linear form right here, and this person's far away from the association within the scatter plot. So when is something a bivariate outlier? when it's an unusual combination of the X and the Y variable. Now, one thing you might be noticing is we're picking a certain X variable and we're picking a certain Y variable. So the X variable is the explanatory variable. So when you think about what is an explanatory variable, and I have the X capitalized up there for you to see, you would say the time you spend studying explains why you get a certain score on the test. And that's my favorite way to phrase it. The time you spend studying explains your score on a test. Let's look at another example right here. We're gonna get a new page going. Another example would be maybe the number of cashiers at a grocery store and how long you spend in line. Would you say the number of cashiers explains why you wait in line so long or why the <laughs> waiting in line a long time explains why there are so many cashiers? So when we think about this, what is the best way to phrase it? And I would say, let's look at here, cashiers in a grocery store and let's look at uh, weight. I think it makes more sense to say it this way, that the number of open cashiers explains why you wait a long time in the line. And think of this as the X variable, what is explaining? And so always think what is doing the explaining why something else is happening. And that's why I like to phrase it that way. The X is the explanatory variable right there, makes perfect sense. The bounds of correlation, and R is the abbreviation for correlation. We'll go back up here to our graphic. The bounds of correlation, which all of these values are R. So let's write an R up here. R for correlation. Correlation. The bounds of correlation is negative one to positive one, which is perfect negative all the way up to perfect positive, and in the middle is the weakest. So as you go further out on this, it gets stronger. So this is the weakest in the middle, and stronger over here, positive one, and weakest in the middle, stronger over here at negative one. Positive 0.5 and negative 0.5 are of equal strength. Next, we have one of my favorites saying, Q, Q, straight enough, no outliers. And this graphic right here is a perfect example. Let's look on this one here. What do we mean by QQ? When I say QQ, it's quantitative variables. So you, you might need to write down quantitative variables. It just means that 
this variable here time is quantitative and this variable here score is quantitative so we have a quantitative quantitative relationship if you have a scatter plot it is quantitative quantitative what does straight enough mean straight enough means that what we're viewing here is a straight enough relationship to contrast it with something that would not be straight enough we'd have something maybe that goes like this right here and i would say this is not straight enough because if you plot the line through it the line does not do a good job of going through the middle of the data at all points you want to see generally an even amount of points above or below the line at all times and we don't see that here we see points going above and below and we don't see an even scatter all throughout at different intervals of x so this would not be a straight enough relationship over here on the far side this one in the middle is a straight enough relationship though what does no outliers mean well when it comes to no outliers no outliers simply means there are no outliers and so that's why i like to say qq straight enough no outliers this one would pass all of them if we want to give it an outlier we usually try to make it very clear and also you can usually mention these things you can say where the outlier is at or we try to draw your attention to it we will try not to do things like giving a small outlier the more obvious an outlier is the easier it is to see that it fails the condition so you want there to be no outliers you want there to be no outliers when it comes to correlation between negative one and zero and one what does that mean well, with all these different values of correlation we can have correlation that is impacted by outliers you might have a correlation of zero and it would look something like this there's a correlation of zero because if you look it would make this right here so right now r is equal to zero but let's put in an extreme outlier right here you'd be shocked but with just one outlier r could easily go up to something like 0.8 and so if you notice the correlation is telling us the linear strength of it and now with one outlier all of a sudden the correlation has been massively changed we can see the same thing happen let's do a counter example here that was an outlier making a weak correlation strong let's start out with a very strong correlation here with just three points these three points have a correlation of 0 0.99 if you notice they're almost perfectly linear and then if you were to put a point all the way over here well, now the correlation is going to be 0 0.01. Now we see, instead of a near-perfect linear correlation, we have a very weak, non-existent correlation. And you can kind of see how the zero comes into play. So the closer it is to zero, the weaker it is. The closer it is to one or negative one, the stronger it is. So strength of correlation is measured between negative one to one, with those being the strongest and zero being the weakest. Correlation is not causation. Correlation is not causation. We can't say this enough. When it comes to correlation is not causation, let's take a look at some important graphics right here. With correlation being not causation, one of the most famous examples I like is how many TVs you own and the longer you live. So we could look over here with TVs and we could look at uh, life expectancy. Life, we'll just say life. So the more TVs you own, the longer you live. And you would think, well, wait a minute, we see when people own more TVs, they're living a lot longer and it's mainly linear. Well, with this right here, it doesn't, it is true that there is an association between owning TVs and living longer. That is a true statement, but it is a false statement to say that owning TVs causes people to live longer. What might be the actual lurking variable? The lurking variable here might be things like health insurance because people who own more TVs might have more money, more access to health insurance. So maybe wealth, amount of wealth that people have is, is also associated with life, but we would never really want to say the cause word. Be very careful with the word cause. Let's just go right here and write cause and let's just exit out. If you see cause on a test, usually, especially on our tests, that is usually something we don't want to do with statistics unless we've done an experiment experiments which we don't get into much are the kind of gold standard to look for cause and effect and just because we observe a correlation between two things even it's if it's super strong it doesn't mean that owning tvs causes you to live longer the two things can be associated but we don't know there's a causal relationship like if you buy tvs you will live longer so with this right here we understand what lurking variables are they are variables in the background such as like wealth for this example so we would assume that wealth is the lurking variable. And there's one graphic that stuck with me throughout all this time, and I saw it in a book so long ago. When you think about X and Y, we don't know if X is impacting Y or Y is impacting X. 
but it could be that there's a Z variable in the background. So think about this with our previous examples. Do people live longer because they own more TVs? Do people who live longer own more TVs? Or does having wealth impact how long you live? Does having wealth impact how many TVs you own? And that's where the Z variable comes into play because it might look like X and Y are, are causing each other, which we should never use that cause word, but it might look like they have some sort of association, but it might be because of some other variable that's kind of lurking in the background. So although you see this relationship between TVs and life expectancy, the variable that's kind of hidden, that's controlling both how many TVs people own and also how long people live, we are assuming for this uh, example is wealth. And that's what we call the lurking variable. And you wouldn't see that variable in the background. It's kind of hidden. And that does it. These are finishing remarks. Good luck. We're once again challenging Easy Escape and Bscape to the speed run. I don't know if they can do it. Are they even watching these things? Probably not. But anyways, good luck.